Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-72. Previously, the party enjoyed a quiet morning until the discovery of two missing children was observed. Mori and Sandal, twins, had apparently wandered into the mine to explore an area marked as off-limits by Gildor. A small opening was the source of some screaming, and Karina, followed by other members of the group, dove in to try and assist. Sister Elaine and Fargus the Ranger were both too large to fit into the opening and went to work on enlarging the gap. We rejoined them as several miners have stepped in to assist and have gotten the hole wide enough. Sister Elaine halted the miners and dove into the tunnel, wiggling her way down into the darkness. Fargus followed a short distance behind as he had grabbed a torch and didn't want to burn off the cleric's robes. The tunnel descended sharply and deposited both of them on a flat flooring that appeared to have been polished at one time. Fargus' torch illuminated the area that appeared to be an ancient temple of sorts with several rough-hewn columns present carved with snake sigils. The dead body of a small child lay in the middle of the floor with a pool of coagulated blood under it. Several columns led off to the area on the far side and not a sound was heard in the strange complex. Karina! Cade! Bolger! Irena! yelled out Fargus, but was smacked by Sister Elaine. In a hushed whisper, she reminded the man that they were weaponless and something evil had obviously killed the child. In response, the man looked around and ripped off a stone snake from an old tabernacle. Checking its weight and balance, he nodded his head and stepped forward to investigate the area. Sister Elaine called up to the tunnel to have everyone remain above, and in response, a pickaxe slid down the incline. She picked up the tool and handed it to the warrior while she took the makeshift club and the torch. The pair slowly crept forward and walked between the columns, finding a passage that went left to right. Shrugging their shoulders, they opted to go left. Making their way down a 30-foot passage and taking a sharp turn to the right, they discovered it was the spot of a cave-in. Shrugging their shoulders again, they returned to their starting point, and then they noticed drag marks down the hall in the dust. The torchlight flickered off the walls and a crackling noise was heard around the corner. The pair stopped and looked at each other, but neither could identify the noise that they had heard. Slowly they crept forward, but then they heard Karina yell, Watch out! A loud hiss was heard and the wall at the corner erupted in blue magical light. Chips of stone shot off, striking the pair, causing them to falter. Angry, Fargus rushed around the corner, only to find a 20-foot-high skeletal snake in the corridor. Sister Elaine joined him, and the torch illuminated the hallway and a room beyond. Glowing sigils at the entrance seemed to prevent the Bone Naga from pursuing the rest of the group into the far side room, and it turned its attentions to the cleric and the ranger. As melee ensued, the pair caught movement behind the creature. They attacked and parried off the fangs of the snake skeleton and saw Karina emerge and attempt to smash the snake with a rock. The flick of its tail sent the wave spinning into the wall with a thud, but gave Fargus the chance to deal a serious blow with the pickaxe. Sister Elaine added a smash with the snake ornament, but it shattered upon impact. The Bone Naga quickly lashed out, biting Fargus in the arm, causing a sizzle to the wound as he had been poisoned. Crying out in pain, he fell to the ground, and Sister Elaine attempted to drag him back around the corner, but the Naga closed in. The cleric's mind raced, and she quickly sent out a sacred flame spell against the creature as she dropped the torch to perform the spell. The blast knocked the Naga backwards, and a war cry was heard behind it. Cabe Silvertongue leaped against the creature and stabbed it with a glowing short sword. The blade struck true, and the Bone Naga hissed in anger and lost several bones in the process. The bard leaped backwards and the Naga crashed through the protected entrance. Dust flew up as the sigils caused pain to the construct, but it moved on the half-elf nonetheless. K 
cave menaced the creature with a newfound weapon, and it was clearly not eager to re-engage with the magical blade. It began to move seductively, and Cabe seemed to be hypnotized by the slow movement, and slowly his weapon began to move lower and lower. The Naga moved in for the kill against the half-elf when a loud crack was heard. Sister Elaine and the Naga looked up to see an immense snake statue being tipped over. With the gaze averted, Cabe snapped back to attention and saw the structure coming over. Rolling out of the way, the Naga took a stab to strike at him but missed. The large stone statue careened over and smashed the bone naga under the immense weight, sending bone shards everywhere. Sister Elaine picked up the torch and moved forward to confirm the creature's death. The illumination then showed that Bolger and Geldor had used leverage to push the statue over atop onto the naga and kill it. Lady Irena hobbled out from behind another statue as the child Sandal ran to Karina who was also limping. Cabe rose with cuts all over his face and spied the downed Fargus, struggling as his arm grew large and was starting to turn green with pus. Clearly poisoned, Sister Elaine ran over to him and withdrew the magic wand of healing and caused pink light to come from the tip, striking the ranger. Fargus slumped to the ground in pain and Cabe looked shocked. Yelling at Sister Elaine, he asked why she had killed him but received a terse look in return. The cleric, pointed with an open hand to Fargus, who was shaking his head, causing dust and bone chips to fly everywhere. His arm was slowly returning to normal, and the pus had stopped flowing. The bard offered an apologetic whoops as the cleric shook her head and went to the others in the room. Confirming that several were injured, she used her prepared clerical spells to relieve the suffering of Karina, Irena, and Geldor. All three had sustained wounds while fighting the creature. Sister Elaine quickly discovered that Lady Irena had suffered a head injury and was knocked out shortly after casting her first spell. Had the magical sigils not been present, the group surmised that they would have been slaughtered. Sandal yelled out her brother's name and ran past the group. Loud weeping followed upon discovery that Mori had perished after landing in the old chamber. Karina moved towards the initial room as miners had lowered ropes and were coming down into the complex. With the creature destroyed and the party in no danger of dying, the group began to check their surroundings. A low whistle escaped the lips of Geldor as he and the others quickly realized that the safe chamber was covered in jewels. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, Thanks for listening.